Hi everyone, this is Natalie with Champion of Coins Tarot. I hope that you all are doing very well today. I wanted to come on to talk about the She-Wolf Tarot. This is a deck that is profoundly important to me. This is one of the most important spiritual tools that I have because it blends together my tarot practice and my kind of mythopoetic religious worldview into one cohesive experience. I have tried to film this video a couple of times. I found it very difficult to do because this is not a review. This is more so me sharing my own experience with this deck. I hope that in doing so, I might be able to help other people who are looking for possible entrance points of connection with this, because I am going to be talking about the specific ways in which I use it. Um, but it's something that has become so personal to me. It is something that has really taken on a life of its own. Um, to the point where I feel like my interpretation of She-Wolf is something that is so wholly unique to myself as an individual that it's incredibly difficult <laughs> to be able to translate that. So we are going to be flipping through the card images together, but um, these are going to be kind of more rambly, um, loving <laughs> reflections on this deck. So this deck of course is independently published. It's created by Devony Amber Wolf, who is also the creator of the Serpent Fire Tarot. And my version of the deck is the third edition that came out in 2019. It is out of print. There is a fourth edition that is on back order that has different artwork. And so if you were to look into getting Chi Wolf Tarot now, um, there are things about this copy of the deck that are very different. So I would use this perhaps as a point of comparison, more so than a reference for what the deck is like now, because uh, this is an out of print copy. Anyways, aside from the point, I got this deck for myself as a Hanukkah gift in 2019. And I really knew instantly from the first moment that I started working with this, that this would be a deck that would be a lifelong companion for me. There are elements within the artwork that absolutely speak to, again, my own personal religious worldview and my own kind of interaction and way of seeing myself in the world. So for those of you who do not know, I am a Jew. I converted to Judaism several years ago and the majority of my adult professional life has been spent in Jewish spaces, um, working for various nonprofit organizations, um, even all the way up until now. Um, at the time of filming this, <laughs> we are about to enter into the High Holy Days. That is the period in between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the new year and the Day of Atonement. And it is the most sacred time in the calendar. Rosh Hashanah commemorates the creation of the world and Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement. It's the day in which we come together as one community, we reflect, we confess our sins, and we resolve to set a new course for ourselves, to reorient ourselves towards the people that we want to be and the people that we know we can be. Um, so <laughs> it's a very deeply reflective time and this deck for me really embodies that. It embodies just that entire cyclical story of being created, of going out into the world, gaining all of this knowledge, gaining all of these experiences, and then coming back to that starting point. The same, but somehow fundamentally different 
than the person that we were before. And the artwork in this deck speaks to me of this push and pull between heaven and earth, this innate connection between them. You have the juxtaposition of these very barren, very expansive desert landscapes. And then in the majority of the cards, you either have just the pure sky and just like this pure pink um, that takes up the majority of the card image or you have these doors, you have these pyramids, you have these stairways that are leading up into the sky, or you have these celestial bodies that are coming down and you have figures who are reaching up and grasping them or who are looking at them in awe. That to me just speaks so much of this innate connection between heaven and earth, between this world and the next world, and this kind of liminality that we all exist in. So that's number one. For me, this speaks to, again, not only those themes that we are exploring within the Jewish calendar right now at this particularly important moment, um, but the journey going through all of the months and the spiritual journey in all of its stages and its moments of deep isolation, its moments of deep connection, um, moments of tension and moments of release and awe and ecstasy. I also appreciate how deeply feminine this deck is because that's very important for me as well. Um, Judaism does have a very rich divine feminine tradition. Um, the Shekhinah is the feminine face or feminine aspect of God. It's a bit tricky to talk about this because Judaism is of course a monotheistic religion and so generally you know we try not to ascribe any kind of pronouns, any kind of attributes or features to God. We also have very strict prohibitions against idolatry. And so we don't typically use any representational artwork for God um, because God is in a sense life itself. Um, it is the force that creates and sustains the universe in which we're all um, being born into and then we are merging back into when we die. So we try not to do anything that would reduce God to an object or that would reduce God to one particular facet because there is this unknowable grand expanse <laughs> to God's nature, right? Um, if you think of the name of God, um, I am what I am, or I will be what I will be, or I um, just am becoming, right? Those are all really powerful translations of that Hebrew text, um, of those words that God introduces themselves to Moses through, I am what I am, I will be what I will be, I am becoming, um, it's just all really great. So anyways, so all those caveats aside, um, that being said, it actually is very, very important for me to honor the Shekhinah, to honor the feminine face of God. And we see this concept develop in kind of the rabbinic period, um, kind of like post-destruction of the second temple where you have this concept of an, the aspect of God that we can see or the aspect of God that we can catch glimpses of in creation, in other people, that is imminent as opposed to dwelling above. Kind of the aspect of God that we want to maybe um, associate with the profundity and the wisdom and the mystery that is in creation itself. That's the Shekhinah, that's like the feminine principle, and that's the language and the pronouns that poets and mystics and different rabbis have ascribed to 
it <laughs> throughout the ages. Um, and for me, this deck is an entrance into engaging with the concept of the Shekhinah, of engaging with the divine in creation, of engaging with whatever aspect of divinity might live within myself. It's incredibly healing for me to be able to engage in this imagery, especially as a cisgender woman. I don't know if anyone else, if people from other um, gender identities might have this experience working with this deck, but for me, um, there's always been kind of a sense of shame around my body, or there's been a sense of shame around my identity and trying to fit into these various boxes throughout my entire life. And so it actually is incredibly healing for me to be able to engage with images such as the ones in the cards of the She-Wolf Tarot that celebrate the female body and that elevate it and that seem to give respect, honor, and reverence to it. There's something that's very, very healing for me personally in sometimes using feminine Hebrew language in my otherwise very traditional prayers and devotionals. There's something very healing for me in picturing God in this way. And this deck absolutely helps me to do that. This deck immediately helps me feel as though I am tapped in to this larger tradition of the feminine divine. And so it's not only symbolic for me of this kind of larger cosmology, like this larger um, kind of Jewish cyclical archetypal journey but also about the journey of womanhood in that and the ways in which they intersect and the ways in which um, I bring my femininity into my spiritual practice or the way in which my spiritual practice informs my sense of self and femininity. It's powerful. <laughs> it's, it's really potent stuff. So in terms of the ways in which I use this deck, I actually enjoy using this deck during this time of year. I enjoy using it during the High Holy Day season, and I enjoy working with this deck monthly. So the Jewish calendar is a lunar-based calendar, and the new moon is the beginning of every month. It's called Rosh Chodesh. Um, and this is a very important day. We have additional prayers that we say, um, both for ourselves and also in synagogue on the day of the new moon. It's also very common now, especially in the United States, for Jewish women's groups to meet at Rosh Chodesh and to pray together or to do ritual with one another or to otherwise do something fun and special in sisterhood and in community to honor the moon. So this is naturally the deck that I use for my own personal Rosh Chodesh tarot practice, where I will reflect on the themes of the month according to the Jewish calendar. I will reflect on the theme that is being presented based off of the new astrological sign that we are all collectively moving into, and I will take notes accordingly. And sometimes I might leave this deck out. I will leave the card pull from that in sacred space, surrounded by crystals or candles or other trappings, just to allow the message of that card to really sink in. This is also a profoundly meditative deck. And so I enjoy pulling a card from this if I am going to do yoga or if I am going to enter into a meditation or into a journey and try to pathwork with the card, try to see if I can sink into that imagery. Um, I also 
used to dabble a little bit in psychedelics when I was younger and this was also a very powerful deck for um, drawing a card from to set an intention for entering into a journey using various psychedelic substances. Um, so I do want to put that out there <laughs> as well as um, another way in which I have used this deck and I have found the results to be incredibly profound. Again, this just so much embodies this relationship between myself and divinity, myself and my religious tradition. And also, I think, speaks to these more universal themes of duality and unity. Of being separate and drawing close to the divine and one another. It taps into this wild space, this expansive space. This one of deep questioning sometimes. But I often find that when I sit with this deck, the answers will come to me. You know, the answers or the theme or the purpose of that particular season in my life will kind of be born out of the stillness of these images, of the expansiveness of these images. And so in that sense, it's hard to be able to do a proper review because this absolutely speaks to me on such a personal level. And because my psyche is different from everyone else's and because my practice is different from everyone else's, um, the themes that I pick up in this imagery are going to be very different than what other people do. Although I think the general consensus amongst the community in regards to this deck is this is one that is divine feminine focused, that this is one that is really beautiful and empowering and encouraging and deep. Um, I say yes to all of those things and also, this is the one deck that is able to sum up nearly in its entirety what it feels like to be me in the world as I am right now. And that also feels like it holds the space for whichever version of myself I will be and am becoming. So <laughs> those were my very long, personal, rambly thoughts about my experience working with the She-Wolf Tarot. Um, again, this is an absolutely indispensable deck for me for all of those reasons listed and more. As always, if you have this deck, I would be so interested to hear about your own journey with it, especially to see what are kind of the universal points of entry and connection with this deck amongst many tarot readers. I love this community because it's just such a wonderful way to be able to learn from other people. I feel like I say that all the time, um, but it's so wonderful to be able to learn from everybody's experiences, everybody's perspectives, to see what they are bringing to the cards and what the cards have to give back to them. If you are also celebrating Rosh Hashanah, I wish you Shana Tova. I hope that you have a wonderful and sweet new year. And to everyone else, I am sending you much love, many blessings as you walk along your own path. Bye.